Welcome back to the Jess Rosinski show. Attempt number five, having one of those days, but still a big day is a big night. I'm sure like people weren't staying up to like watch it all night because you know people have lives and they're like you know normal people, you know, which I kind of tend to be. Um, you know, but a lot of different races were going on and a lot of things that are actually kind of important were on the ballot. So I was paying attention to it. Look to see what some of the numbers were throughout the night. I was, you know, still doing errands and all the other normal stuff that you have to do. Like cooking, cleaning, laundry, all the beautifully fun stuff. But the first one I want to hit is New Jersey. It's right now is still too close to call. They're around what I saw covered across you know, several platforms is about 89 percent of you know everything was in so we still about 11 percent to go murphy still had a slight lead i think it was like 0.3 percent lead somewhere around there we started way up high like 20 percent, but then more came in and he obviously you know then chitterelli he went up the more when it, you know, so they've been really neck and neck for most of the time I saw it after like that first hour again, when, you know, some of them were first dumping. I mean, there's so many strong blue districts and counties that, you know, he was going to get a lead out of there no matter what, but I mean, it should scare like Democrats, I'd say, especially in a state like New Jersey. Granted, this would be the first time a Democrat was reelected in 47 years, 47, 44, whatever the hell the number is. In over four decades, if he holds on and wins, but I believe there's like a, uh, somewhere around a million more registered Democrats than there is Republicans. And this race was last time I saw 14,000. As of last I saw, you know, vote difference, which is nowhere near a million. So, I mean, I think that should set some kind of precedent for what they do about, uh, you know, COVID restrictions, education, having the highest taxes in the country. I mean, a lot of bad things. And that's not a good sign when they get that many. It's not a good sign for Biden when everything does. And really, if he does get reelected after, you know, everything last year. But again, he ran the same nursing home policies like New York and that. Uh and paid times going, oh, well, I did all the lockdowns, churches up. I wasn't thinking about the Bill of Rights. Yeah, yeah, well, that's still there because you don't care. You just do. Um, close the way they treated little businesses like Attila's gym. At one point took the doors off of their gym so they couldn't keep them locked from stop them from getting in. Uh, like there was all kinds of stuff that really was just dumb. And I can't believe you know, that he does, like, if he does get reelected after all, that just for the fact that it's been so long and it's coming off of that. Um, really is kind of odd, I would say, probably as the best, nicest word, um, but it's still way closer than it should, like, than you would expect it to be, than it should be really in any of that. And again, it's New Jersey, and with all the stuff they did, there's so many more Democrats, and it's still right now, you know, within tenth of you know tenths of percentage points, which is you know, especially with I think Biden won by like 15, 16 points in New Jersey. Like it's only been a year, not even. I mean, since that election or since he took office, like that's really, really terrifying. Should be for them, should be an eye opener, but I'm sure it won't be because a lot of them are already doubling down on the crazy stuff so we could you know only hope we'll see you know obviously we're going to see what they do um again though being inside of like tenths of percentage points i'm pretty sure absolutely no one saw that coming yeah everyone can say they did should really could even say he did um a lot of people could say they did but that's really, really close for how much they outnumber them. But we'll see how it all ends up. It could still swing. You never know. Like, it's that close. 
I was hoping, you know, for a close one, you know, a good one. Uh, I was hoping, obviously, that Phil Murphy would, you know, lose just because of all the headaches he causes me, my friends, my family members, the state, you know, like just the COVID in general, the way they were doing things was just sketchy. But that's another, you know, story and everyone has their opinions on it. I just, you know, and I say big government isn't necessarily the best thing, so I don't like it. And I've never liked the state of New Jersey. Even when I lived there. Once my own grandmother left, well, New Jersey died to me too. Officially. But that moves us on to Minneapolis and their vote to get rid of the police department for the Department of Public Safety. Somehow, the most terrifying part of this to me is the vote was actually at 56% no and 44% of people around there still voted yes that they should dismantle it. Like that actually really terrifies me for, you know, towards the level of brains that people actually have in this country and how much they'll listen to all this just bile being spewed by idiots like Ilhan Omar, no offense. I mean, her and the squad, are, they're just dumb and actual stats prove that they're dumb. And, you know, they still like, it's, she's still pushing for it after it got voted down to 56 to 44, yeah. Percentage points, that's not total votes. I mean, that's last time I saw 40,000 people since 40,717, I think last night at one point when I saw it, that actually voted yes to get rid of the police department. I'm like, excuse me, what? Like crime, like homicides and robberies are up. Um, like all that stuff is up since they took, you know, the amount of people that retired or left the city force, people got laid, laid off when they cut, you know, what, 8 million? I got millions from the police department last year. Like, and if you look what happened in places where they did much worse, like Austin, Austin, you know, Texas got rid of 30% of them, you know, cut it by 30%, which means, you know, obviously we lost all kinds of, you know, police officers down there, lost all kinds of everything down there. And, you know, after that, the homicides are up 88% because, you know, the lack of police and the way they treat you know, everyone, like all these things that they do. And they're like, no, no, well, we're already up this much. We don't need it to go any higher. Like, and somehow, even though with those numbers jumping, like all of them across the board, I think rape was down. But like, everything's way higher since they got rid of police. And actually, 44% of people actually said, even though getting rid of all this money and police officers is what, yeah, we did that. And things got worse. We want to dismantle it all together. And we're going to believe that Representative Omar that it's the cops' fault for not doing their job and holding up their oath, even though it's physically impossible for them to cover everything which is why crimes are happening more because there's less cops to stop it response times are longer like new people actually listen to her and say think it's the cops fault it has nothing to do with taking millions from them and losing all those officers like if you actually believe that i it's yeah i don't want to call people you know dumb because apparently that's offensive but you're an idiot there it's actually meaner probably but like taking away that many officers and that much money is like and then the crime goes way up like that should be a sign that you need to put that back and get more officers not get rid of everything completely the last time i checked homicides and robberies and all that like do you need a weapon to do that and well people are going to do that regardless if there's some you know mental health personnel don't do it like believe it or not people with guns and weapons do bad things and you need armed police officers to stop them from doing bad things But somehow 44%, like I, Hannah got a kick out of my face when, you know, flipping through and we saw that last night, like, like when it was again, just a number of 40,000, like, excuse me, like, like you have to actually be really stupid though, to believe any of that. I'd say, I'm sorry, but I'm not at all. Actually, like you have to be bona fide, ridiculous seeing where all the numbers like all the places where people you know took away large portions of the police budget and their resources and officers like retirements are up and fleeing like how the number of violence and crimes actually has gone up since they did that but yet these people keep pushing that we need to get rid of more police and take you know get rid of them all together like if you believe that 
when there's that many like stats poking you in the face and punching you in the face at that, and you still believe it, I really don't even know what to say. At least that won't get me in any sort of trouble, but I think it's physically impossible to come up with taking away the money and the numbers going up and then, you know, coming to actually like a cognitive thought that means you need to get rid of more of them. Like that's actually physically impossible to come up with like A plus B does not equal like Z or Brown. Let's say A plus B does not equal orange. Like, like it's obviously a very straightforward correlation between the two and people actually try, still voted to get rid of them all together and Omar still tr- and said she's going to try to do it. Like if you fall for that stuff, you actually are dumb and you know what's part of the problem. But for I'm going to say something, you know, offensive or mean if I keep going on that. So let's move to Yunkin winning the race for governor in Virginia. I might add along with two other Republicans. So they swept you know, those three spots across the board. And that's the first time the Republicans won a statewide election since 2009, let alone getting three of them. And one of them was Winston Sears, who becomes the first woman and first woman of color to win a race in the state, Virginia, by becoming the new lieutenant governor. And yeah, so good on her. I mean, sadly, they're not covering it on the mainstream media. They didn't cover her speech and do anything. Why? Because, you know, she's a Republican, which means she's just the new black face of white supremacy, like when Larry Elder ran for governor in California. As you know, we can't celebrate conservative women getting into you know, doing first like that. I mean, look at the big deal they made out of common. Look at the big deal they make out of anyone on the right. Like, you don't even hear about it. That one can't actually debate me on. It's true. Um, the letter, you know, immigrant, Marine, like mother, like she's all kinds of great things. So I'm actually really excited to see what she does regardless, but just because I'm too new lieutenant governor, new governor, like a bunch of you know seats in the state, they could flip that whole thing. Like that could be just a big thing to, you know, flip the state and get things going in a completely different direction. Which I mean, if you looked, he even out, you know, Young can even out did Trump in the rural areas in a lot of places. Um, because of what I mean, he was just grassroots going places that people normally don't go. I mean, he was here, there, and everywhere out there reaching out to everybody, and he did it all on his own, regardless of what they keep telling you. You know, I mean, there's lots and lots of stuff they're telling you. But I mean, basically, he went around to all these places and he won over parents in the suburbs and, you know, small businesses, people that I don't know, believe in, you know, capitalism and small business and school choice and parents, you know, having a say in knowing what their children are actually learning. Like he just won, you know, they keep, you know, battering kitchen table topics but i mean like every but it really is like all the stuff that they care about around the table like they like jobs crime rate education like those are all important things that people actually care about and i mean all they wanted to do is keep you know lying about it. i mean he brought up stuff and they're the worst and this you know their mccullough was like the day before the election and the day of like like even out there saying that CRT is a racist dog whistle, you now used by the right, of course, because you know, we're the racists, but they're the ones who find race and everything, keep bringing it up. That isn't even taught in the state, even though the state's Department of Education confirmed it. And if you go on the website, you can actually find it. So there's a great lie that kept pushing on it, which didn't work. People actually are you know, waking up to it and using their brains now, saying that Yunkin was with Trump the night before the election. You know, they were nowhere near each other and they didn't do any events together, but Trump did endorse him, but he did it all on his own. Believe it or not, uh, the normal thing again that they did with Larry Elder saying it would be the black face of white supremacy this time. They're saying that he was just if he won, it was just going to be Trump all over again. He's a surrogate of Trump and he's going to be him all over again. It's going to all hell, the sky is going to fall, even though if you look at everything that's happened since he left, none of his policies are the ones that did that. But that's another story. Uh, mainstream media outlets calling Yunkin the Delta variant of Trumpism because, you know, can't say anything bad about, you know, Delta or make any jokes unless you're a liberal, then you can make all the jokes you want. Just again, to continue the Trump thing. And they mentioned Trump like every day and everything they did and all the people that came to campaign for him, which I might add, Youngkin did all of his stuff all on his own. 
there they were, you know, after Trump, Trump, Trump. And these people, I mean, like they brought in everyone to help on the call. I mean, for President Obama, President Biden, Vice President Harris. It's great to see she actually did something because you barely see her do anything except laugh. Uh, James Clyburn, South Carolina, Stacey Abrams from down, you know, in Georgia. We all know how much people love her. And like they even said, they're out down there just to get, try to get the black vote. And he's done all these people just to go and try to get them, like let them think they're probably going to go vote for one. Um, go and try to get them if you know, they're trying thinking about voting on the other side. Like, I mean, like, I'm sorry, your plan just didn't work. Just doubling down on crazy does not work. Continuously lying. So, you know, this isn't taught here. This isn't happening, even though they have books. And it's on the damn state's website proving that it's there. Saying parents don't shouldn't have any say in their children's education. I'm sorry if you didn't think that was going to piss everyone off. Like, you have to actually be stupid. I'm just saying... It's been forever since the Republican won anything there. You got beat bad, even with bringing in the heavy hitters. Because the policies that you're, they're doing are completely crazy. They're off. They're in rocker. They're crazier than I am. Even in a really bad mood. And, you know, the big thing they keep doing is they just keep pulling the race card and saying that we are all the racists. And why do they keep bringing it up? Yeah. Really, we're talking about school choice for everybody and doing all, like, you know, getting jobs and doing all this stuff, all they keep doing is they just throw in the race card everywhere. That's all they have. Like they're the ones that, you know, did the CRT. They actually started it. Uh, ones that were all about the 1619 project, gave all the money to Black Lives Matter. You know. And here they are calling Larry Elder the black face of white supremacy. Like a black man trying to be, become the first black governor of California instead of celebrating that. They were going out calling him the black face of white supremacy. Because no matter what, they have to pull the race card. I'm sorry, the people that are always pulling the race card are the ones that are actually the racists because they're the ones making everything out to be racist, which means all they see is race, which is racist. See what I did there? You know, it not take much to figure that. And then Joy Reid, because, you know, we all know I love Joy Reid, saying that, you know, white people have a problem being taught about the country's history and slavery. I mean, like, I don't know about a lot of you, but I remember my education, which whew, I graduated a long time ago, but 15 years now. But, you know, I learned about the country's history and you know, the Irish being, you know, servant slaves, or we want to call them before, like the Africans made it here. And uh, I learned about slavery and the Civil War and the Civil Rights Movement and all the progress we did and the good, the bad, and the ugly of it all. So we actually learn the history instead of just trying to change it so we don't learn anything and changing it so we don't hurt people's feelings because they don't like it. Well, guess what? All history isn't good, but you got to learn it. Or you do it again and again and again, which is why we have you know segregation starting to happen in schools and all kinds of stuff again. Like apparently we learned nothing. They taught no one anything. Sorry. No one's history is good. If it hurts your feelings, I'm sorry for you. Nothing's perfect. I have Irish in me. I'm not. Look at all the Irish ever, you know, really indentured servants and slaves all over the place. Like you, you don't see them trying to change history, and crying about it every three seconds, trying to pull out anything that reminds them of it and calling everyone else the racist. Like, like I'm sorry. It's just, it, it's really just, pathetic that that's the state that they're in but if you look at the whole thing they didn't campaign on anything they just campaigned trump's racist trump's racist trump's racist larry elder was running against you know gavin newsom in the recall white faces white supremacy it'd just be trump 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 race 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 just like this one then we don't have time to make up all this fake stuff well they're actually teaching it's really there like the sexual assault school really happened yeah, you know, all this stuff is really actually happening. It's not, and you guys just, and Democrats you know, out there, they just keep pulling the race card. They've been doing it for a while. They've been doing it since Obama was president, saying if you didn't like you know, his policies or you'll know what's in the bill if you pass the bill in Obamacare, like all this stuff. If you didn't agree with it, I mean, I automatically started pulling the race card all the way back then. I had people do it to me back then. Like, no, policy is just stupid. Not going to work. They don't have the authority and it's going to bankrupt everything. Guess what? A lot of the time it happened and they really didn't have the authority to do it. So the Supreme Court has even ruled a bunch of times. 
they didn't have the authority to do it. Um, on th- but they've been doing it for what? Our team, I mean, they were doing it since he was running. So I guess back in 07. Yeah, 07, and I'll do it all that. Primaries happened in 08. Election happened in 08. You know, uh, look, and everyone listening here, they remember it. I mean, it's always the race card. Ever, and somehow, you know, like, but they're calling us the racists. Like, dude, you got two terms. Two. You need a majority of the white people to vote for you, Obama, to get to two. Then in his book, he goes and says that he only got, you know, Trump got elected because all the white people felt, you know, some sort of way by having a black man in the white in the White House in the Oval Office two terms. Like you do realize it takes a majority of them to vote for you to get you in. You know, like they're always pulling the race card and they're, you know, turning and saying that we're you know, people on the right are the racist. I don't got a racist bone in my body. I hate stupid people. Of all the things they ask you about your race and all the boxes where you're, you know, checking, you know, doctor's office getting a loan, anything like I don't see stupid as, you know, a race. So I'm not racist. I just hate idiots. People have no common sense. People, even when you give them the facts, still tell you that you're a crazy person. You know, like, I just don't like stupid, crazy people who are ignorant. And then when you prove that yeah, what they're saying is wrong, they still, you know, attack you because their brain just, I don't know what it is, but yeah. Like in all of them, they said, they're still going to go after or do the stuff they're trying to do. Helen Omar says she still wants to get rid of the police department. Like all the, like the people in the city, there's a lot of Democrats in Minneapolis, um, voted against it. Like only Ellison, who's the attorney general, and her voted for it. Like politically, they're they're the big names. I mean, Amy Klobuchar said no. Like there's a lot of people that said no, and yet they're still pushing for it. Because everyone, like with common sense, knows it's a bad idea. They're pushing it. The race thing, they're still pushing it. There's no such thing as CRT in the schools. It's actually there. It's on the website. Pushing it. Like they just push, push, push all kinds of bullshit. Everyone on their side just plays into it, no matter how much you prove anything. Like it actually is disturbing. Like I know common sense isn't a common virtue, but damn. He gives someone, like after, like a lot of people, let's go with a lot of people. He give them just a shred of it. I'm not asking for much, just a shred, just a small little shred of common sense or, I don't know, cognitive ability. Because, like, I was severely concussed. I don't remember any of it. I was still answering the questions honestly and just, you know, stuff, you know, like all kinds of, even when I was having conversations, I was coming back, I was still, like, thinking better. I wasn't going, like, well, they took millions of dollars from it, and then a lot of police left. The crime went up. So, yeah, we should get rid of it all together because, you know, it's their fault that it's going up. It's the cops' fault, nothing to do with you know the fact they got rid of so many and cut the budget like that. Like I'm sorry, I don't want to know. I hope I never get if I ever get that bad, someone take me out back like old yellow. I ever get that bad cognitively because I don't like it. Just it hurts my brain to even fathom how everything I just covered and all the issues and all the lies and people still support it and think that's a great idea, even though it's been proven wrong and it. Is obviously like you just need to be able to think to see that it's batty, but <coughs> excuse me. I don't know. Glad to see though that you know that got voted down. Thank God. You know, for all the innocent people that are already suffering, like we don't want to make it even worse. So thank God. Uh, good on Virginia. Get Yunkin and Sears and the other people that got elected across the state to try to flip it, but you know to go and. Help and do that, especially again, because they're just pushing so many like racist lies, you know, about, you know, he's racist, he's Trump, CRT isn't there, da 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 da. Like, it's all quite there. The mainstream media just keeps playing along with it. Good on CNN for going all of October without having one show hit a million views. So at least there's that positive note. But I mean, you need people to keep waking up. I had a good feeling going into it. You know, Jersey is always a toss up. It, it's a hole. You know, apparently people just like to be miserable from what we see there. So, you're going to be miserable. Just keep your ass in Jersey and don't go move somewhere else and then vote for the same stupid. It makes you miserable. It's because of the policies, it's because of the party you're voting for. So, if you move somewhere and vote that way, you're just going to bring more misery. It's going to follow you. So, please just don't do that. But thanks for, you know, checking me out today. Again, there's, you know, some lots of good stuff, and there's some terrifying stuff that people are still pushing stuff, even though, like, all of it 
is obviously not winning people over, especially in a lot of these states where it should have been pretty easy for the Democrats. Um, we'll see where it goes tomorrow. Um, I'm sure hopefully we'll have the result from New Jersey uh, between Murphy and Chitterelli. So sorry for messing up your name, Ezra. I was, I was trying. You know, I was trying. It's one of those big names where I had like an idea or two and I said, screw it. Let's just say it and get it over with. But Jack, there we go, Jack. And some other stuff. So we're going to see, how, but first got to see how this election ends up. You know, and then I'm going to get into tomorrow. I think I'm going to get into a lot of polls because there's lots of new polls out, both you know, conservative polls, liberal polls, polls that are actually the very few that are actually in the middle. Like there's a lot of numbers of people talking about a lot of things and it's only a few short months in and this is, you know, it's, these things showed what's going to happen, you know, what could happen going forward with all these policies. So I'll get into more of that and the end of this and some other stuff tomorrow, wherever I come back. But I appreciate it. Thanks for checking me out. Don't forget, follow along on all the platforms. You know, it doesn't take much to go on there and click follow or like or whatever the hell you have to do, depending on what it is. Uh, comment on the videos. As you comment on them, it helps me know what you, know, you people think. Comment on the thing. Leave me voice messages on Anchor if you go on there. Yeah, I get back to all of them. But share it out, too. That's the big one that helps me get more eyeballs and ears on it. So enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for checking me out. We'll figure out that whole New Jersey thing and get back to that tomorrow. And enjoy the rest of your day. So peace.